Hi, welcome everyone. This is Kapil. Uh, we have a very, very interesting session lined up today. Uh, we have got about 75 odd attendees who have already joined in. So I'll just wait, wait for another quick 30 seconds to make sure that everybody settles in and whoever is in the process of logging in just completes that. And then we'll start the session. Um, <clears throat> by the time uh, others are logging in, if you have any question related to the topic of today's session, I would request you to keep putting it down in the question panel and we'll try to take all those questions sometime during the session today. So I could still see a lot of people are still logging in. We've got 81 now. So let's just make sure that everybody settles in probably another 20 seconds and then we'll start. <clears throat> Uh, Rajesh, you're asking a question. Will you get the recording? Yes, everyone will get the recording. So we would take about two to three days to kind of download it, process it, and upload it back, and then we'll mail it to all of you. Great. So I think it's time. Uh, first and foremost, I really want to welcome all of you and thank you for taking time out for today's session. The topic of today's session is SEO. Is it your can candy, vitamin? or internet. To lead this session, uh, we have Prashant Puri. Prashant is a co-founder and the CEO of AdLift. I would actually leave it to Prashant to share more details about AdLift, but uh, to the extent I know, AdLift is a digital marketing solution companies and they provide all kinds of solutions ranging from SEO, paid, even creative campaigns and uh, influential outreach programs. So uh, I'll uh, ask Prashant before he starts to introduce a, a bit more about what kind of services AdLib do offer. And Prashant uh, has been in the digital space since more than 20 years. And by the way, the AdLib has been in business in a little more than 13 years. So there's a lot for all of us to learn from his experience. He's an alumni of uh, Columbia uh, University. And uh, before AdLift, uh, Prashant has been head of uh, global marketing of shopping.com, shopping which is a comparison shopping arm of eBay. He's also worked with Yahoo. So this, uh, I'm sure I'm, I'm eagerly waiting and want to listen uh, from and learn a lot from his experience. Regarding today's session, uh, SEO, is it your candy, vitamin, or painkiller? Not the way it occurs to you, but what it really is what SEO really is. I hope we'll be able to distinguish that in today's session and that's what's the takeaway you can expect. But to be specific, the key takeaways that you can expect from today's session, how to decrease the overall customer acquisition cost and increase your overall average order value. That's one takeaway you can expect. How do you increase the share of SEO traffic and revenue? How do you increase your website domain authority? And uh, we would also cover some of the must use tools to win the SEO game. So that's the some of the key takeaways. Before I actually hand over the session to Prashant, I just wanted to have a quick check in terms of the audience base who all is present. So I'm just launching this poll on your screen. I would request each and every one of you to pick up an option that is most appropriate if you're already a student, just pick up the first option. If you're in the sales and marketing domain, whatever level, just pick up the second option. If you're an entrepreneur or a CXO, pick up the third option. Or if you're in some other functional role and you're exploring digital marketing and inside of that, you're attending the session. I could see 65% have voted. Everybody please respond to that. And then I'll just quickly close the poll and share the results with all of you as well. So I'll count till five and then I'll close it. Five, four, three, two, and one. Fine. So here are the results. Close to 50% of the audience today are sales and marketing. That's very, very interesting. And 24% are CXOs or an entrepreneur. Thank you very much. Thanks all of you for joining in. And then there are people from other domains who've joined in to explore what uh, digital is. So I'm sure, uh, Prashant, if you could cover a little bit on the basic, that'll be helpful for them. And there are a good amount of students also who've joined in. So I hope, Prashant, that also gives you a kind of an idea on what kind of audience are present today. 
uh, let me just quickly hide uh, results. So Prashant, over to you. Eagerly. Thanks so much, Kapil. Uh, hi everyone. Great to uh, great to meet you uh, virtually, and um, uh, you know, very very thrilled to be uh, doing this webinar on what I feel is uh, one of my favorite uh, topics uh, within the digital marketing realm, which is SEO. Uh, so as Kapil mentioned, we'll be you know, essentially going through uh, the, the journey of SEO and seeing how important it is to you. And that's basically the classification and I'll kind of walk you through that. Uh, for some of you who not, you know, who's, who are hearing me for the first time, uh, I'm Prashant, I'm the CEO co-founder of AdLift. Uh, we're a 13 year old uh, performance first uh, marketing agency based out of an headquarter of Gurgaon with offices in Mumbai, Bangalore, we're close to about 180 uh, folks. Uh, you know, again, just a couple of quick introduction slides on a number of accolades that we won for clients uh, that we worked with in the last 13 years or are working with. Uh, we're a global agency based out of Gurgaon. So, uh, not only do we service, you know, India, APAC, but also uh, North America, Europe. So, uh, and we're pretty much vertical agnostic. Uh, 60, 65% of the clients we work with are purely on the SEO and organic uh, growth side. Uh, we also work on creative, social, paid media, which is, you know, 30, 35% uh, of our business. Okay, so with that, you know, the agenda is, uh, how do you actually decrease overall customer acquisition cost? And you know, the reason why I kind of picked this topic was because it's definitely need of the art, right? Given where we are from an economic uh, climate uh, perspective, I think all uh, vertical heads, uh, CXOs are asking, uh, what can we do? Uh, what more can we do with less? And uh, when those questions come up, uh, you know, the key is driving more val uh, value, driving more revenue at lower customer acquisition costs and increasing average order value. So how do we actually look at these two KPIs and how does you know SEO fit in uh, achieving these, right? So uh, SEO inherently, as you'll see in the slides to come, uh, is uh, primarily responsible if it's growing for you to decrease you know, your customer acquisition cost, increase uh, AOV. So we'll get into that. With that, increasing your authority, right? So really basically, you know, going by Google's algorithm, if you are if you have a high domain authority, it's gonna rank you more. Uh, and hence you see the likes of, you know, uh, Flipkart, uh, Amazon's ranking more because they have, you know, uh, significantly high authority that they've built over the years. And as we go along uh, this uh, presentation, uh, I'll be mentioning must use uh, SEO tools. So with that, you know, is SEO candy, vitamin, or uh, painkiller? And the way I kind of classify this is, uh, you know, with uh, brands that we're talking to or work with initially, uh, we basically come across, you know, three, three, three kinds of classification. One is uh, SEOs looked as a quick fix, you know, so, hey, I need to get my rankings up. Can I do it by, I don't know, day after. Uh, the others look at it as a nice to have. So highly relevant, uh, highly reliant on uh, other channels, like maybe paid media, branding, offline. Uh, and SEO is more of a nice to have. So it's like your vitamin. And brands that actually rely heavily on organic traffic on SEO uh, to really bring down their customer acquisition costs. Uh, they've got teams in place, they've got agencies in place, uh, and are looking at metrics very closely because this is their painkiller. It actually kills the pain and the pain being uh, how do you drive more value? Uh, how do you reduce customer acquisition cost? How do you drive higher AOV, increase that? So that's pretty much the three classifications. So which one are you, right? So what we've done is we basically looked at about 60 to 70 brands uh, that we worked with, are working with, and we kind of classified them into uh, are they a painkiller, which is the topmost, uh, and then whether it's uh, nice to have vitamin or it's kind of your candy. Now, what we've done over here is uh, we've looked at SEO traffic as a percentage of paid search. So pretty simple calculation. I would encourage all of you to actually, you know, after this webinar, go into your Google Analytics or speak to your teams on giving you this data that will actually tell you where you fit uh, on this graph. 
the calculation is if you're driving, you know, 100 SEO visits on a, in a particular month and you're spending X amount of money to drive 100 paid search clicks uh, to your website, 100 by 100 is basically 100%. So you're driving equal or more value from an SEO to a paid search uh, ratio perspective. If you're driving 50 clicks and you're paying for 100 clicks from paid search, so 50 from SEO and 100 from paid search, that's basically 50%. And one fourth would be 25 clicks on SEO and 100 you're spending on paid search. That would be 25%. What we've seen is uh, painkiller brands, right? The brands that are heavily invested in SEO and drive greater than 100%, so more SEO traffic than paid search, they reduce their customer acquisition cost by about 60%. That falls sharply down to the 20s range if you're driving one fourth of SEO traffic, right? So more traffic that you drive inherently your GAC, your customer acquisition cost will drop. But if you're driving more SEO traffic than paid search, overall, if you look at SEO plus paid, your customer acquisition cost drops by 60, which is huge, right? That's pretty much where you want to be if you're not there. So again, go back, uh, you know, do this. We, we love data. So feel free to share, you know, what you find uh, with us. And uh, that would be a good starting point from, you know, where you fit in within the entire realm. Uh, Painkiller brands drive overall upwards of 35% of SEO traffic. So they'll be driving, you know, paid search, display, social, other, direct. But SEO is their primary driver of upwards of 30, 35. So again, do this, uh, you know, once the webinar is over, look at how much percentage of SEO traffic you're actually driving today. So why does it actually, you know, reduce customer acquisition cost and drive higher ROI, right? Because basically what we see is if SEO is working for you over a period of time, your SEO cost per clicks inherently decrease, right? Because your cost of SEO, whether it's a team that you built in-house or you're working with an agency, that's inherently constant. It might increase, you know, based on the number of content you publish, all of that, but inherently it's more or less constant and traffic continues to grow. Hence your effective cost per click, right? Cost being your internal cost or agency cost and clicks being traffic being the traffic to your website it reduces over a period of time, hence driving high, higher ROI. Whereas paid search or paid channels are inherently con constant through a period of time or are increasing, right? Because Google, Facebook, they continuously increase their cost per clicks quarter over quarter, depending on a number of different factors, such as, you know, competition, space, vertical that you're in. So overall, if you are not investing in SEO, you're typically going to see customer acquisition costs over a period of a year, two years increase. So again, you know, investing in SEO makes sense. Talking about ROI, what we mapped over here is, again, looking at, uh, you know, 60, 70 brands across multiple verticals. If you're driving more SEO traffic versus paid, your overall ROI shifts within the eight to 10 X range. Uh, that falls sharply in the sub 2x range if it's one fourth. So again, the more SEO traffic you drive, the propensity of having higher ROI is a lot, uh, a lot more. SEO converts at way higher rates uh, than paid, right? So typically what we've done is we've looked at sites and we've segmented them by size of site. So SEO traffic to a, to a site on a monthly basis falling between one to 3 million, 250K to 500, 100 to 250 and so on. Inherently across the board, we'll see SEO driving higher conversion rates versus paid by a tune of anywhere between 40 to 60%, which is massive. And lastly, uh, paid CPCs are anywhere between three to 50X higher than SEO CPCs. So, we work a lot with healthcare, consumer products, uh, edtech, BFSI, and what we've seen is uh, SEO CPCs, if it's working for you, are inherently lower anywhere between three to, uh, paid CPCs are inherently higher anywhere between 3X to 50X. Again, all this data talks the same language where SEO drives up higher ROI by reducing customer acquisition costs overall and increasing conversion rates and AOV. We then get into 
how do you actually, if you're not there, right, how do you actually get to painkiller status? So what we've done is we basically looked at, you know, what does, what does, uh, what drives SEO market share? So a number of different things here, right? So we break it up into two parts. One is everything that you need to do on your website, right? Uh, keyword, um, uh, what's the target audience, content, do you have the right content in place? Technical SEO, are you technically sound? Competitive analysis. And then content marketing, which is basically driving up domain authority, which is basically having external sites talk about you, link back to you, and how are you doing that effectively? We basically, you know, looked at the previous slide and we uh, built a, a, a stack over here to understand the importance of all these components in a pyramid stack, right? So what is essential to ranking? And then what actually improves competitiveness? So once you've actually started to rank in the first page of Google top 10, how do you get to top three? And that's basically improving your competitiveness. All of this obviously takes time. So uh, it's, you know, it's basically uh, you start today and over a period of time, as you've seen previously, SEO traffic starts to build up and starts to uh, you know, reap uh, rewards. So now we take that entire stack and we get into what are the things that you need to do to improve on each of these pyramid metrics. So crawl accessibility, right? Technical SEO, very critical. Uh, this is a spreadsheet uh, that we use where we'll basically benchmark against what's working, what's not, and go into each of the Google search console elements to see whether all of your technical SEO components are in check, right? So, uh, do you have you know crawl issues like are they are you erroring out a lot right so this is again you know data from a client that we started to work with they had you know upwards of 200 300 crawl errors uh, worked on fixing those uh, core web vitals is extremely crucial part of uh, seo ranking factors are most of your urls in the good condition right so again once you go into google search console you can actually see the condition of your website and work to really improving uh, uh, all of these core metrics. Uh, are you submitting your URLs, right? So you could be a site which has 10 uh, web pages. You could be a site that has 2000, but are they all being discovered and crawled without any errors, right? So again, getting the basics in place from a technical SEO perspective and then going a little, you know, uh, going a little beyond on looking at more advanced technical issues like core web vitals, page speed, all of that becomes critical to improving technical SEO. And all this data is something that Google gives you. Uh, it's, it's on you to uh, act on. We then move up to keyword research that actually fuels your content strategy. So knowing your audience, knowing your business, understanding what keywords do you really want to rank for. We know there's Google Keyword Planner, which actually gives you a bunch of data information, right, from competitiveness, average search volume. Uh, so definitely a must have tool in your toolbox uh, from a keyword research. But then there are other great uh, tools like Uber Suggest, which go a little bit above and beyond on giving you more related suggestions, uh, questions. Uh, if you're actually building content and you need to understand what kind of titles are people actually searching for for this keyword, It'll spit that out for you. Uh, Ahref is a fantastic tool, must have uh, something that we use on a day in day out basis, which gives you a number of different more uh, keyword items, questions that people would be asking with these particular keywords. And I'll get to, you know, why questions and creating that kind of content on your website is, is critical. Leveraging synergies between uh, paid and SEO. So uh, a real case study of a client that we work with, Porsche and Norm. And um, what we've done here is we basically look at where are you spending money on paid, right? What are the top keywords that are driving traffic? We look at them from a non-brand keyword perspective. So anything that's not uh, got your brand name is a non-brand keyword. And then we see how many of these are actually ranking for you on SEO. So if you're paying for them, if it's converting, if it's driving revenue, all of the good stuff, SEO should be part of the mix, right? So we basically download a ton of all of that data. This is a quick snapshot. And we look at high spending clicks and cost and see where you're ranking, right? So typically your money keywords should be in the top 10, top five over a period of time. And then you know that you're synergizing efforts between both paid 
uh, as well as SEO. So again, a must do exercise uh, to really leverage uh, your paid media uh, data and fueling your SEO decisions. Creating compelling content, right? So I touched upon keyword research using Uber, uh, Uber Suggest, uh, Ahref, um, Google Keyword Planner, of course. But you know, you definitely when you're you know you're sort of rolling up your sleeves, you want to understand what are people actually searching for, what are compelling uh, headlines. And SEM Rush does an amazing flywheel, you know, job of actually creating these and helping you with it. So. Again, leverage this tool, put in the keyword that you really want to create content on, and it gives you all the headlines that would be compelling, um, questions that would be compelling, and makes you, you, know, you start to create that content because you want to drive that top of the funnel uh, traffic to your website. We then move on to uh, other areas which are, you know, uh, for the most part, you know, ignored, right? So. If we look at the entire Google ecosystem, 64% uh, are zero clicks, which means people actually search, but don't click on either the organic result or the paid, right? So the, peop the, the searches that are 33% uh, are organic, those get divided into other uh, options for the end user. These would be, you know, people also ask, local packs, featured snippets. So it's not only the organic results that are important for you to actually rank on. You have to go a step further in making sure you're covering the other 60% of Google, of Google search uh, ranking pages and being here in one way or the other, right? So we need to kind of, uh, we need to broaden our SEO lens and not only focus on organic results in top 10. That's very important. That's the first step for sure, uh, investing in driving authority, but also start looking and pushing the envelope on the remaining 60%, which is people also ask, you know, there's some very interesting data that I'll share with you in the next slide. 60% of the times uh, people also ask uh, box shows up on searches, which is a huge number, right? So how do you actually benefit, benefit from that? We get into that featured snippets or zero box. So Lots of times you'll see you'll, you, you'll be doing you know, longer tail search queries or looking for answers. And there'll be one that really pops up right on top, even before the first result uh, gets in. And that's your featured snippet or zero box. This drives upwards of 60 to 70% CTR, uh, almost like a brand search term. So really ranking on featured snippet becomes critical. We've got videos, right? So how do you optimize? Uh, we've seen, you know, brands that we work with and do audits for, they've got, you know, upwards of 200, 300 videos, but they're not optimizing it for SEO. And you'll see videos rank a number of times on Google. So if you've already created a video, why not optimize it on, on YouTube with the right keywords, with the right description so that it, you know, pops up. And then you've got Quora, right? So lots of times you'll see Quora ranking. So for those questions, you should be actually going into Quora, answering it, talking about your brand, uh, adding more questions to it. So Quora also needs to be part of your overall SEO strategy. People also ask, right? So feature snippets here. Uh, this is interesting data, which basically calls out over a period of time, currently on mobile, the PAA, which is people also ask, triggers 60% of the time. So it's huge, right? So how do you actually benefit or how do you use this? This is where you actually start to create content for those questions, right? So, you know, searching for best uh, hotels in Goa, as an example, all of these questions pop up. You should be creating questions which are pertaining to your business. So let's say, you know, you're a Yatra or a, you're in the travel space. This kind of question should definitely be on your blog site you can leverage again, you know, flywheels to give you more uh, data around uh, the kind of keywords that you want to incorporate. But these should be answered and part of your overall content strategy. We then get into uh, featured snippets, right? So here, uh, just to recall, feature snippets are basically, you know, your zero box that pops up even before the first uh, position. Uh, we took a brand, Sunglass Hut. Uh, based on AHRF uh, data, 
about 5,300 keywords are what they're ranking for. And 2,200 are eligible for the featured snippet, which means, so typically not all Google, Google will not trigger the zero box for all keywords, right? It cherry picks the one that it feels the end consumer needs that quick answer or needs to click through and it pops that up right on top, right? So not all keywords would be eligible. In this case, Sunglass Hut, there are about 2,200 keywords that are eligible. They have 28 that are currently ranking on the zero box. So if I was Sunglass Hut, you know, I'll actually look at this as an opportunity for me to really increase the 28 and go all the way to the 2,200 over a period of time, right? So how would you actually do that? What you do is you look at the 2,200 and you would look at keywords that are ranking in the three to 10 position. That's your low hanging fruit. So you're already there. You've actually created a lot of great content. Uh, like what are polarized sunglasses in the ninth position, uh, polarized glasses in the fourth position, so on and so forth, right? So you take these keywords and you build uh, either uh, more content on these landing pages, you do interlinking to it, uh, you drive external links, uh, backlink to these landing pages and really push these up because these are already there. They just need a nudge to get to the zeroth position. Um, Titan I plus is a, uh, is a great case study where, you know, we started with the 16, 18, as you're seeing before, and now over a period of a year, it's moved to 160 keywords. CTRs are anywhere between 60 to 85%. This project alone, uh, has increased traffic by about 15 to 20% of the entire website. So if it's executed correctly, there's a definite bump into your traffic for your website. You can also leverage competitor insights, right? So if, uh, let's say if you are a brand, uh, which is not as big as Lenscart, uh, your IMII, for example, uh, you can actually leverage SEM rush to give you keyword ideas on what is the other brand ranking for and where are you a weak in or strong in or missing, right? So here we put Lenscart versus IMII. Uh, this is interesting data. Uh, Lenscart is strong in about 5.7K keywords, which means IMI is weaker uh, in 5.7. And uh, the untapped opportunity right here is upwards of 32K, right? So looking at these and saying, hey, this is untapped for me. I need to actually dive deeper into this and look at where am I missing out on and the ones that I'm weaker in, how do I become stronger? So leveraging competitor inside to really fuel your content strategy. Maybe you don't even have keywords on it. You might have a product, but you don't have, you know, content around that product. So building that out becomes really critical and this data uh, helps you find that. I had mentioned, you know, briefly, uh, how do you, you know, when we are talking about feature snippet, how do you actually increase those three, four, five uh, ranking positions to the zeroth position, right? Obviously, content beefing up the content on the on the website on the on the page uh, becomes critical. Getting you know your technical SEO in place, but also interlinks, right? So interlinking from one page to another really helps the flow of domain authority and link equity to other pages. So doing that at scale becomes critical. And what we've done here is we basically looked at you know AdLib data, uh, looked at Google Search Console. The more inherently, the more interlinks that you have on a website, you drive a lot more non-brand impressions. This is actually a publisher. So it's an outlier here, a publisher like the Times of India. They have tons of interlinks, tons of content, and hence the impressions. But across the board, you'll see the more interlinks that you have, the more non-brand impressions you drive. Uh, and you know, this is data from John Mueller, who runs the Google Search Console team at Google, uh, says super, you know, interlinking is super critical for SEO. So what we do over here to do this at scale is we leverage Screaming Frog as a tool and we go ahead and crawl the website and then uh, look at keywords that we want to link from, from their blog pages. It spits that out. We create a spreadsheet and then we pass it on to the technical SEO team. So this way, it's not something that, you know, you, you'd be like, hey, you know, I've got, you know, I have a blog site, we've got like, you know, a thousand, uh, a thousand different articles. How do I go into each article and do that? 
the tool does this for you and gets you up to speed and then moving forward you can continuously uh, make sure interlinking is part of your seo process going back to the seo stock uh, stack uh, backlink and content you know creating content that's share worthy uh, ensuring backlinks becomes really critical again this is 45 percent of google's algorithm right so if you kind of break down google's algorithm 50 55 percent is all the things that i've just talked about which is creating content on your site making sure technical help is in place uh, going after the right keywords synergizing efforts between you know seo and paid all of that is stuff that you can do on your website but you need third-party sites talking about how great you are and that's where the link pack comes in uh, it's also extremely important right so this is data from Content Marketing Institute. And the reason why more and more marketers are investing in content marketing is because inherently it checks all the boxes from a uh, KPI perspective, driving traffic, sales quality, higher conversion rate, SEO ranking. So hence getting to this becomes critical. There are a number of different ways uh, that you can actually do it. This is one thing which is more on the tedious side because you don't own the third party uh, you know, sites, right? So how do you get them to write? Uh, we've solved that problem at AdLift, which is where uh, today 85, 90% of the brands that we work with leverage content lift. So even if you know they have in-house SEO teams, uh, they leverage our content lift platform to really scale up their link back and content marketing uh, program. We build this tool to basically do this at scale. So we've got, uh, you know, we built APIs across Ahrefs, SCMrush, Moz to make sure the sites that are uh, on the content lift platform check all the right metrics from a domain authority, from a, a DR perspective. And then we categorize these uh, publishers by publisher theme. So lifestyle, BFSI, finance, technology, there are about 11 different uh, publisher themes. So depending on the vertical that you fit into, we can actually create content and have it sit on these third party sites. We can dive deeper into it. You know, after the webinar, we'll open up for questions. I've also, uh, you know, listed my, my email, Prashant, the dad lift. If you have more questions about how we do this for our partners, feel free to uh, reach out. Uh, it is the reason why uh, a lot of brands use us for this is because it's turnkey. It doesn't have any dependencies on internal resources or internal dev resources. Uh, this is something that we you know, can scale and do uh, where we do the keyword research. We create the idea. What kind of content do we want to create? We leverage a lot of the tools that I've talked about, like the flywheel of SEM Rush, AHDF, to give us more ideas on the content. And then across plan development amplification, we go ahead and syndicate this across high authority sites, leveraging a number of tools apart from the content lift. So BuzzSumo, uh, Scoop It, uh, SEM Rush to do that. We inherently see there is a strong uh, correlation. So because Content marketing and link back is 45 to 50 percent of Google's algorithm. The more of this you do, you see a strong uh, correlation on organic traffic. This is uh, public data from AHREF. Uh, as referring domains increased for Bosch and Rom, uh, traffic also increased. These are the kind of content that we would create on these high authority sites. Uh, another client is, you know, the Titan Group, Mia. Again, as we bumped up our referring domain. Uh, uh, energies, we saw a significant increase in uh, organic traffic over a period of time. So coming back right to uh, where you fit under this ecosystem, right? So one of the things was to hey, go back and figure out, you know, are you driving 100%? Are you in the 50s? And then leverage a lot of these uh, ideas and tactics to actually get to the 100 if you're not. Uh, the clients that we work with, uh, we call them addictive painkillers because they're driving upwards of 100% traffic uh, from an SEO traffic to a paid search perspective. So uh, 300, 280, 150, 369. Uh, and the reason behind actually investing and doing this is because it lowers your customer acquisition cost and increases average order value. So how would you actually map out where you currently are apart from this particular graph is uh, if your SEO traffic overall is, you know, within the zero to 10, 
uh, then you're probably looking at it as a you know uh, quick fix. Uh, if SEO traffic versus paid search is you know less than 25 percent, SEO spends as a percentage of paid media spends. And when I talk about SEO spends, I'm not only talking about investment on uh, you know uh, teams or agency. It's also about content. Are you creating a lot of content? Are you creating a lot of backlinks? Are you investing in that? If that's less than one percent, you're probably in this bracket. And then. The painkillers, like I mentioned, are upwards of 35%. Uh, they seriously look at SEO traffic as a percentage of paid search. Um, percentage of spends from a SEO to paid is upwards of 30%. So a big investment, both on uh, internal teams as well as agencies, you know, creating content. Uh, with that, uh, that's all I had. Uh, I hope this was insightful and would love to open it up for uh, questions. Great, thanks a lot, Prashant. Uh, it was quite insightful uh, hearing about the kind of results you produced, and especially at this time when uh, the Google update is just started. So all of us are kind of looking at how exactly it's going to impact all of us who are taking it more like a painkiller. Uh, so, uh, guys, the the floor is open for question now. So, any question you have, please feel free to uh, put it in the question panel. And I'll make sure that all the questions I take up all the questions that ask Prashant, Prashant to address them. So all of you, please do that. And uh, while you guys are putting it up, I just wanted to have a quick, uh, you know, question, Prashant. So this healthy content update, which is actually currently just started to roll out, probably today morning only. I'm, I'm assuming you're also observing how exactly it will impact. So from an SEO perspective, all of us who are involved in this. How do you think it's going to impact all of us? The kind of activities that we do is going to change. You think that there's any significant change we need to do in our work style? What's, what see, you know, about? typically, typically we see, you know, there even last year uh, there were a number of core updates that Google, you know, so Google, I would say, pre-pandemic uh, was not very aggressive in rolling out uh, updates. From 2020 to 2022, we are seeing more updates that happen even from uh, 2015 to 2019, right? Like there's a big update happening and there is impact. Now, what does it impact? It basically weeds out non-helpful uh, content, right? So when we're talking about the helpful content update, it's basically, are you creating content for the sake of it? And we've always, you know, evangelized this even before these updates come out that gone are the days of creating SEO content, right? When we look at content, it's our copywriters who create content. It's not an SEO team that creates content for our uh, for the brands that we work with. It's content that you and I would want to consume. Tomorrow, if you are in, in the shop to search for insurance, health insurance, we want to make sure that you and I will read that content to understand, hey, what is health insurance? Why is it important? What are the pros? And then ultimately, hey, hey, here you can go and get your health insurance or life insurance or travel plans, right? So it all has to be content when you're thinking from a content strategy perspective, we have to move away from the whole idea of SEO content or Google content versus I want to read the content if I was looking for that. And if you are doing that, then these updates will not affect you. Great. So I think the learning is that we should not focus on content purely from search perspective. It should be put from user perspective. And, and those of us who are actually doing purely search content uh, might be in a problem in a couple of weeks time. Great. So uh, let me just this lot of yep. questions that I have. So let's just uh, start. Can you tell how to create backlinks? Hashpeed Kaur, there's a question from Hashpeed Kaur. Anything that you want to, any strategies in the state? So, you know, I covered this in, in, in my slide. The way we do it uh, is we leverage our own proprietary platform called Content Lib. It has about 20,000 publishers across 11 different publisher themes. So, we create the content for you. Uh, we figure out the idea, the keywords, all of that create the content and then it goes and sits on this third party site. It's a one-to-one. -one. So let's say you want us to create 25 backlinks a month. 
we'll create 25 ideas 25 content pieces and these would sit on 25 different websites which are of high domain authority linking back to the main page that you want to rank up now that's how we do it where we built our own platform if you were to try this on your own you know basically what you, you would need to do is do research on sites that are out there blog sites that are of high authority you'll have to leverage some tools like scm rush ahrf to make sure that they're not spammy sites they're not sites with low domain authority because if you were to do this on sites with lower domain authority it'll actually hurt you right so it'll be it'll be the it, it won't help you right you'll probably you might end up even getting a manual penalty so you have to make sure that you keep all these checks and balances in place and then reach out to these blog sites and say hey this is my article can you go ahead and publish it it's more time consuming but that's the other way to do it it's a great way uh, there's another question from ramya pandeya pandey uh, does the content mentioning sponsored post bad for seo no so if it's a sponsored post uh it by google's uh, uh definition our guideline it needs to be a no follow link which means it cannot be a do follow and pass link equity to you right so it's not yeah. harmful it's high authority sites talking about you it's just that it'll be a no follow link it won't be a do follow and you're fine there So while you've already answered about uh, backlinking, so this uh, follow-up question, Rohit Bhatani, uh, how to choose which website is good for backlinking? Is you, you can throw more light on that. So you need to do a number of different checks, uh, right? Uh, you'll have to look at the content that's on the site. Is it actually ranking from an SEO perspective? Is Google actually driving traffic to that website? Uh, is the domain authority higher than 3540? Uh, is the domain rating higher than 3540, which is Ahrefs rating? So look at Moz, Ahrefs. We look at SEM Rush also. Uh, these are a couple of checks and balances to make sure that that's a good site, a good fit for you to drive content and backlinks from. Okay. Great. And uh, in the same light, uh, there's another question from Kumaran Mani. Uh, is there a way to find out the quality of content on website? Like, are there some metrics you can propose, like content score? How can I know that the content quality is good? Are there some metrics you guys use? <laughs> um, so there is uh, there's a tool which is really cool. Uh, I'll encourage you guys to use it. It's called the Hemingway app. So just search for Hemingway app. Uh, put in the content. You can you know paste your content and it'll score it for you. And will it do it only for your website or you can do, use it on the competitive website also? All, mm -hmm. all content. Okay, great. Uh, Rocher has a question, which off-page activity need to be focused upon? I think uh, people asking the similar question, if you want to add more to that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I've answered that before. So. Uh, the process I've talked about, uh, you can do it on your own. You can leverage our content lift platform, ad lift. So uh, I think we've answered that. <clears throat> so there's a, a question regarding SEO versus paid PPC. I think I missed it. Yeah. So for two months campaign where the campaign is looking for sudden influx of traffic, what do you suggest? Should we start investing in SEO versus paid CPC? <laughs> so if your goal is you need traffic in the next two months, uh, immediately, then it's paid because SEO takes time. Uh, but I would strongly, you know, suggest that today you might need it, you know, quickly, but that quickly will never go away, right? After this campaign gets over, you know, three months down the line, you'll be like, hey, I need more traffic. Uh, again, you'll go to paid search. So your reliance on paid search will become stronger and stronger and you'll always be pushing SEO away. So think of SEO as, you know, your uh, going to the, you know, going to the gym, right? It's must do. You don't get results immediately. But if you keep pushing out that I'll go to the gym, you know, next month, next month, uh, you're never going to get healthy, right? So uh, 
you if it's immediate results you need you have to go to paid search but long term results long term you know building a great digital funnel building a great digital strategy you have to get seo in place yeah and i think the best would be the one of the beautiful graphs that you showed us initially in terms of how over a long term the cpc cost goes up and in case of ppc and versus seo so once you show that to a client they will understand which one to go after uh, correct from ramya pandya uh, how many uh, they, but many tools like rank math promotes stuffing of keywords in h1 h2 title meta description and everywhere is that a good strategy no it's not uh, again there needs to be some level of keyword density so if you're talking about hotels in goa and you're building a landing page for that or seven you know best luxury hotels in goa you have to talk about you know best luxury but every three sentences you should not be so it has to be it has to be mentioned where but google now is extremely smart enough where uh, it understands when is it that you're like again creating content for the bot versus creating content for the user again i'll go back to create content that you would read if you look at it and say what's going on over here why are they use best and luxury in every like three sentences there's something wrong with the content so you should be the benchmark of that i've also shared uh, you know like i said the hemingway app look at that it scores your content will give you an idea uh, there are keyword density uh, uh, tools also uh, scm rush has it uh, they'll give you like density of keywords you can compare that number or tool with uh, your competitor that is outranking you you'll get an idea also right of where you need to be got it uh there's a question from anshuman tripathi uh, how will you analyze core web vitals in google analytics what are the parameters to check in the report so i think all the can you just tell us about the top 4 or 5 these are the vitals you should go after when it comes to the seo help of your website so uh, you know typically there are a you know there are a number of different uh, metrics uh, that google looks at right so within core web vitals there are three main uh, that google will spit out uh, for you to work on right lcp which is your largest uh, content full paint uh there's first input delay fid and cumulative that's your cls cumulated layout shift so these three parameters you need to work on and google will tell you how to improve those and then that basically fits into your web vitals report where it tells you how many urls are okay how many are good and how many are bad okay uh there's another question regarding uh of page work are forum posting or uploading resources on aggregator sites a good way to acquire backlink by shubham see um, a test of backlink acquisition is was it uh, easy for you to do or was it tough if it's easy most likely everyone can do it so there's no competitive edge right uh forum links uh can be perceived as spammy or article submission or directory which google uh, penalizes uh if it finds you doing a lot of it uh they might not have uh you know great quality content there might be adult sites there gambling all of that is putting you and your brand in the wrong company so a lot of things you need to look at to see uh, why you're doing it right from a, for the forums great so there's another question from uh, amit uh, how do you create a guest post because uh, most of the time i do not get a positive response from the website owner can you uh, please uh, share your views on the same so that's the i mean it's like i mentioned right building backlinks is tedious and tough uh you it's a hit and trial you'll have to reach out to for every you know 1000 uh, people that you reach out to maybe five will respond and do it for you uh and we saw this pain point very early on in adlibs journey back in 2015 is when we built the content lift platform so this entire backlinking we do it at scale 
for some of the biggest brands in the country, startups, uh, to take this off your SEO plate and you know concentrate on your on-page SEO initiatives. But it is tedious if you were to do it on your own. Okay, uh, I think this is something you mentioned on the website also in, in your presentation earlier as well. But, uh, the Milan he wants to have a guidelines on how to budget spending between seo compared to the paid search and I so think- i would say a good good start would be again it's very difficult for me to answer that question if i don't know what the number is so uh you know if you're spending i don't know one crore on uh, paid media on google search uh, then i can't say you know spend uh, you know 35 lakhs right 30 percent the benchmark of reaching the you know the 100% of seo traffic what we've seen is brands spend the bigger brands would spend anywhere between 15 to 20% uh the smaller brands that are probably spending you know less than 25 lakhs on paid search would be spending around 35 40% so a little higher but uh, i would say investments in seo especially when you're starting off should be anywhere between the 4 to 10 lakh a month range Uh, there's a question from Harpreet Kaur. Does social media contribute in SEO? No, so social media doesn't contribute in SEO. Uh, most of the links across social media are all no follow. They don't pass the link equity. So they, it doesn't help. Great. So guys, there are actually a lot of questions. Uh, I mean, I'm actually picking few to ensure that all the concerns are being covered. So if you think that yours is not been cut out, I request you to just repost it, sir. And try to uh, go through it once again. So while uh, you guys are posting it, I have a couple of more polls for you. Uh, so this I would say would be more uh, of a, a sponsored post, you can say. So we, as you know, we do digital marketing course and uh, we have a six months long course which we call as Certified Digital Marketing Master Program. We've trained about close to 30,000 odd people in the last 12 years in digital marketing. And uh, our next batch is about to start. So here are the dates for these batch. By the way, this module has uh, in the six months period, five weeks are dedicated to SEO. And we cover the AHF, NSEM, Rush, for sure. These are the two. So if you're interested in any of these batches, you can just make SEO. Um, or if you're not sure of the dates, you can just mention I'm not sure. So while you're responding to this, uh, those of you, I'm assuming a lot of you are the CXOs or entrepreneurs, and if you're really looking at outsourcing your SEO services, I'm sure very soon Prashant might share uh, contact details and you can possibly contact him directly as well. So I'll just count till five and I'll close this poll. Everybody who's interested, please respond to this immediately. So on the count of one, two three four and five great thank you very much and let me just quickly pick up more questions which has not been addressed earlier uh so this is interesting by vijay raja using quora for content marketing authority results uh, in banning the pages or user from posting happened for six accounts handled by us um how do you work on from this and I'm assuming that you know now Quora is now uh, you can't put in, in the, uh, links within Quora. So how do you really measure the effectiveness of the work that you're doing in Quora? Is possibly an add-on question that I would like to answer along with that. Sorry, can you ask? Uh, I didn't get the first question. Uh... Using Quora for content marketing uh, slash authority results in. Uh, slash authority results in banning the page or user from posting i think they are they what he's talking about is that it, it has happened with him that six of the accounts that he was is banned because of that extensive posting so how do you really overcome that that was a question so you know again i'm not sure why like would need to look at the kind of quality of content what were you posting was it too much uh were you actually adding value to the Quora community? So, you know, the Quora strategy needs to be a very sound one, right? Uh, it needs to take a very thought leadership uh, uh, perspective, right? So if you're a beauty brand, 
uh, you can't go into Cora saying, you know, someone saying if someone's talking about, you know, this this lipstick versus the other, you can't go in and say, hey, buy mine. You have to take a very thought leadership perspective. You have to talk to them about the pros and cons of using a specific product. What can it do to the skin, the skin care, and build that authority over a period of time versus say, buy now, buy now, right? Uh, you have to look at uh, Quora and Google and Ahrefs and see which are the keywords that is actually ranking uh, within your segment. And if you use Ahrefs, it actually gives you that. Go in and answer those questions to begin with, right? Those are the ones that are ranking high. And how would you measure this effectiveness? Once you see your answers being ranked on Google, people are coming to to that, are reading. You would see an uplift inherently on traffic to your website through direct channel or through branded SEO uh, searches. Okay. And uh, the follow-up question that I asked, how do you really measure the effectiveness of it? Uh, is there, like we personally put Quora campaigns more in the branding initiatives rather than an SEO initiative. Uh, but is there a way to measure the effectiveness of the work that you're doing? Yeah, it is. So you would start to seeing your questions or the ones that the questions you answered to actually rank on the, the Quora snippets on Google, right? So a number of times Google actually spits up Quora right on top and you'll see lots of links also within that. So that's one way of measuring. And once that is happening, uh, your brand searches should be going up and direct traffic to the website should be increasing. Those are the KPIs. Right. So the direct and the brand traffic are kind of indicative metrics for the same. Correct. Okay. There's a question from Ashutosh Nayak. What's a good score in Hemingway app? So I would say, you know, any, any, any uh, score upwards of, I think, uh, 50, uh, 55, uh, from a word count. So if you if you have like, uh, let's say you've got a word uh, count of about, you know, 55, 60, which is uh, you're basically creating short copy content. Uh, the readability should be in a seven to eight range. If you're creating like an 800, 900 word article, then upwards of six is a very good score. Great. Uh, there's another question. Uh... What are growth hacks to increase organic traffic? Any quick growth hacks would you like to suggest? <laughs> it's uh, it's time consuming. So, uh, sorry, the short answer is it's not. If you want fast traffic, then you'll have to go to paid. If this is something that time will reap benefits, you have to spend that time to actually reap that benefit. Great. But I would like to add on top of it, even if anyone is proposing you any growth hacks, be very, very careful uh, because the next Google update, <laughs> you might not be there. So, um, yeah. yeah. Well said. Yeah, absolutely. Agree. And there's a question from Ditti Jain. Uh, do you need to notify the other website when we build an uh, outbound link on our website? Is is it an, some data source site for the same see if you are uh, taking content from another site and you're putting it on your site uh, it's duplicate content and you have to reference that site so you have to say source is money control source is toi if you are creating content which is just linking to another site you don't need to take any permission i mean they'll be more than happy to get that link from you Great. So there's a question from Shivani for the new brands of businesses. Uh, what is the minimum time that is required for ranking? Yes. A brand new brand uh, to start ranking would be anywhere between four to six months in the top 10 position. So you should give yourself at least that amount of time. And Vikas has a similar question. So what to do for the recently launched site is a set of activities the initial set of activities that you propose regular blog post or something like that everything i talked about right keyword research getting your title meta metas in space uh, in place uh, h1 tags moving over to content creation compelling content making sure technical help of this website is fantastic there are no 404 errors wrong canonical tags 
core web vital page be basically your entire gamut uh, you have to launch a content backlink program uh, if you want to rank uh, you know uh, within the three to four months period otherwise it would just take longer you have to build your authority you have to have third party sites talking about you it's critical if you do all the on page and you don't do this off page and the backlinking it's going to take you you know months and months of effort to get anywhere on google so that's uh, you know you have to do both uh, both together great um so there's another question how to determine the number of pieces of content to start ranking is there some guidelines on that as well it depends on the size of site you know uh, difficult to give you a number uh, the partners we work with do we do you know 100 150 publications the partners we work with we do 10 a month uh, depends on size of site and goal Great. so there's a question from uh, milan uh, i'm sure this is a concern you would have also faced with your clients many times the client is impatient and want quick results how do you convince such impatient clients when it comes to investing to seo for three to nine months so you should just ask the client you know how much time will it take him or her to you know get a salman khan body uh, if they can do it you know in a month's time then your seo also you can do in a month's time uh, okay. <laughs> it's i think uh, if the client is willing to listen for you for a long duration there's a lot of pointers that you can take it from the today's presentation and uh, if the person understand what is the value of seo in the long term then possibly things would be a lot more easier great so tushar has a question how no follow links are helpful in an SEO ranking, do they really help now? See, inherently, Google says you know they don't pass link equity. Uh, form no follow, um, and I would say sometimes you know we have to not uh, you know take everything that Google Google tells you as the holy grail. Uh, my view on this is if Times of India is talking about you, if Forbes is talking about you, if Money Control is talking about you you're someone important okay so you are going to get a benefit on it but on paper no follow does not pass link equity is what google says i would say if you have big publishers talking about you it's definitely going to impact your seo traffic rankings all of that great uh, so there's a question from suvajit uh, there's a lot of question and probably i'll take this last couple of them since it's already four uh, yeah if we could uh, maybe take it till four or five it's four or three so maybe one or two uh, i have another uh, you know meeting to hop on to and mm -hmm. and again you know feel free if i've not answered all the questions my uh, my email is prashant at the rate at lift.com uh, you can also reach out to me on linkedin uh, I'm happy to answer questions after that. Great. Thanks a lot, Prashant. So there's a question from Subhajit. Uh, if you could like share some broad pointers in this regard. Uh, I am an interior designer project. Last six months rankings are stuck. How to improve my ranking? So I'm sure you can't do the detailed evaluation right now, but if you can just give him some pointers to look at, that would be great. I mean, look at uh, technical help of the website. Look at Google Search Console. See if you look at your core web vital report. Uh, look at backlink data. Look at your domain authority. Are you actually do you have a backlink program in place to increase domain authority, domain rating? Uh, look at uh, quality of content, number of content. Do a benchmark with who's outranking you. How much content do they have? So. Pretty much a mix of these things should give you some some direction and answer. Great, thanks a lot, uh, guys. I'm actually launching another poll. This would be helpful for us to launch the next webinar uh, based on uh, whatever the areas that you want to explore further. If you can uh, uh, pick the area that is most relevant for you, and we can accordingly decide the topic for the next webinar. So uh, I would request each and every one of you. Pick one topic of your interest, and the one that is getting the maximum vote will actually launch a 
and second only. So we we'll just uh, count back from five. Everybody, please respond to this. Five, four, three, two, and one. Thank you very much. So it's four or five, and I think Prashant also has to move to the next meeting. I'll just take a quick poll once again to take your feedback how the session has been for you. So please respond to this poll as well. And I think you already have Prashant's email ID. You you've been receiving emails from Digital Vidya in any way. If there is any way we can help you further uh, as a in the digital marketing space, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, and at uh, this point of time, I really want to thank Prashant for taking time out. The session was very insightful. Uh, the kind of work they are doing. I mean, personally, I know in an organization we keep struggling between SEM Rush and EHF and the whole holistic approach and the tool that they have created is pretty phenomenal. So those of you who like to explore and take uh, their services, uh, I'm sure you'll you'd be able to get good results. So thank you, Prashant. Thanks a lot for taking time out. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, great to be here. Thanks for having me, Kapil. And uh, thanks for the audience for joining us. And uh, uh, yeah. Hope to, uh, it's a small digital space. Hope to meet you folks in person. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone. The session is now Thank closed. Thank you. Thanks.